I'm Nana Morrison, and this is Cheers to God. I'm so excited. I want you to call your family, call everybody, tell them Cheers to God is on. God has a message for you. And you're going to understand today why we pray, the importance of prayer. Why should you go on your knees? Do you have to do that? And so many more. I have a man in the studio, a very, very handsome believer, <laughs> Mr. George Lamte. Amen. Thank you for being on Cheers to God. Please Thanks introduce so yourself. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a privilege and an honor um, to be here. Um, anytime the believer gets to share our testimonies, our stories, I think that it's a wonderful thing. And I, I'm already in love with this place and what you're Thank doing. You. So God bless you. Um, as she said, my name is George Lamptey. Um, a little about me, I'm a financial analyst, as I mentioned, for the Air Force. Um, that in itself is a okay. testimony. Um, and I'm just a normal young man looking to serve God, um, give to God everything that he's given to me. Mm. Um, and I guess, as you mentioned, we're talking about prayer. Um, I believe that there's a grace that I have for prayer, um, having served and currently serving as a prayer director for uh, Blaze as well. So You are the prayer director for Blaze ATL. That is Man, that's, this is a powerful position because <laughs> prayer is, is, I mean, that's the most important thing, mm -hmm. most important way of communication with mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we should pray? Why do I think you should pray? I think you touched on it. <laughs> um, prayer is a command from God. Um, in Matthew 6, when Jesus is teaching the model of prayer, he says, when you pray. Um, he doesn't say if you pray because he's presupposing that mm -hmm. prayer is a need and it is something that you will need to do. Um, and so God himself tells us that we must pray, pray always, pray in the spirit, um, continue in prayer. These are all commands from God. And if you're asking why, um, anytime God tells us to do something, that alone is the reason why, mm -hmm. right? Because as children of God, we must obey him. Um, but as you alluded to, it is because prayer is uh, one of our main forms of communication with God, where our spirit and our and our spirit man can mm -hmm. actually commune with God, um, surrender our will in prayer, be changed in prayer, all these things um, that allow God to really have his own way and his own dominion in our You're lives. You're very young. Thank you. You're very young. Thank you. And, um, you know, a lot of young people like myself, I mean, <laughs> we love to concentrate on other things. Mm -hmm. The prayer part, <laughs> we don't really like mm -hmm. it. What makes you, why, why do you love it? I, um... I believe every every believer has a certain grace that God has given to us. And I have found out that for me, prayer is the grace that I carry. If I had to highlight anything um, when it comes to the spiritual side of things, I think that, and I know and I believe um, that God has graced me in the area of prayer. And so it, it, is, it is one thing that it is a command, but it's another thing that when a man is graced for it, like you, you're here doing this mm -hmm. because you have grace, but it comes grace natural it. Yeah. to you. Um, you can speak. If someone mm -hmm. wakes you up one morning, oh, I need this quick video shot. I can or do it without even thinking. It, right? yeah. And so um, there's so many different things that God has given us as natural abilities that come easy to us. I would say that prayer is one of the things for me. Um, and also understanding the importance of, of prayer, prayer, right? Anytime you understand that there's a priority, something that is necessary. The Bible says something that as a vital necessity, when you come to the understanding that prayer is a vital necessity mm -hmm. for the life of a believer, um, it allows you and keeps you pushing, pushing. to, to continue is there to pray. the Old Testament way of praying and New Testament way of praying? Mm. I, I actually don't think so. And, and I say that for a few reasons. In the Old Testament, um, there are all sorts of prayers. We talked about it a little bit, and mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll talk, get into it tonight. Um, but there are all kinds of prayer. There are uh, prayers where, where the man of God would um, inquire of God, right? Ask God a question concerning his wife, Rebecca, when she was barren. There are prayers where we, we make supplications before God. We pr present requests before God, all of these things. And um, those models of prayer are not different in the Old Testament versus the New Testament. Mm -hmm. There are still all kinds of prayer today for you and I as believers today in this dispensation. The thing about prayer that I believe has changed fundamentally is the fact that when Jesus, again, 
uh, was teaching the disciples. They said, teach us how to pray. The first thing he said is that when you pray, say our father. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, men did not have a relationship with God to have that re revelation that God is first our father. They knew him by Yahweh. They knew him by El Shaddai. They knew him by the titles and the names. However, in the New Testament, one of the revelations we have is that God is a good father, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so when we pray, we are not praying to a God who's simply a healer. So when I need healing, I can call upon him. What, of, what about when I'm, I'm just depressed? You, do, do you get what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you're so praying if, to a father. Yes. So, so in the New Testament, the revelation today we have of prayer is that number one, God is a good father, that regardless of what the need is or regardless of what is on the hearts of men, right? The Bible says that unto him shall all flesh come. Mm -hmm. He's the one that hears prayer, unto him shall all flesh come. And so it is the fundamental difference is that we must have the revelation that God is first a good father. And so whatever our request is, we can go to him boldly. Um, to present it before because table. David in Psalms there's mm -hmm. a way of praying that is I did this so you give me this mm -hmm. I did this so I deserve that mm -hmm. and I believe that many believers today mm -hmm. are still living that kind of mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and you you said it that God is a father mm -hmm. they still see God as a supreme being mm -hmm. and saying that don't do this don't do that and I'm gonna give you this mm -hmm. and so I didn't do it I didn't do that mm -hmm. I need this now mm -hmm. I mean what would be your take what would you tell a believer who thinks that way yeah um, I, I would emphasize a relationship first with God, right? It is not, God is not about, do, as, it's sad that a lot of Christians today think that God is all about don't do this mm -hmm. and do this and do that. And it is not so much about that as it is having a genuine and a pure relationship and a walk with God. And it is out of that pure relationship and walk with God where we can present certain requests to his table, we can ask him for certain things. Um, there are places, right? The, the Bible talks about Hezekiah, mm -hmm. um, a man that God had sent a prophet with a real word to his house and told them that get your house in order, mm -hmm. that you are about to die. And has, the Bible says Hezekiah turned and faced the wall to pray. Yeah. Right? Because he did not like that report. And one thing that fascinates me about that story is that it was a real prophecy sent from God. Yes, that it was your a real time prophecy. Is up. Mm -hmm. And God respects prayer so much that even that which he sent the prophet to come and say, when the man turned to face the wall and prayed, God turned that situation around by his prayer. Right? The children of Israel mm. were in captive mm -hmm. for 430 years. Sure. They finally left Egypt mm. 430, the 30th yeah, mm -hmm. that was when they left. Mm -hmm. What were they not doing? Hmm. What did they finally do mm -hmm. that all of a sudden God hit them? Uh, God, for one reason, he wanted to process them in the wilderness. He wanted to humble them. He wanted to teach them some things. Um, another reason was that they were disobedient, you know. Mm -hmm. Another reason was that they still had that fear factor of Egypt and not taking new challenges mm -hmm. on, so on and so forth. Um, but another reason was... Um, just like you said, I, I believe it's tied to prayer because the Bible talks about when the man of God said that I saw by the books, mm. right? I saw by the books that the years of desolation was up. So I prayed. I got to go on a break. <laughs> I'll see you right back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All Nations Church. We restore and release potential in people by connecting them to God. Listen, if you don't take what God has given to you and use it well, you empower the enemy to use it against you. Samson's failure became the enemy's entertainment. Please visit our website at allnationsusa.com or simply call the church office at 770-923-8383. Subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Stay blessed. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Cheers to God and I'm Nana Morrison. If you're just joining in, we are talking about prayer and I'm here with Josh Lamte. Please call your friends. Tell them that Cheers to God is on. Call them. Let them join in. God has a message for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that finally they prayed mm -hmm. like what you said. Mm -hmm. But there's something about the sackcloth, mm -hmm. Mordecai, Esther, mm -hmm. David. Mm -hmm. 
any time they were going through something, mm -hmm. these people wear something that mm -hmm. the Bible describes as a sackcloth. Mm -hmm. was not pleasing to the eye, but they will wear it and cry unto God until something is done. What does that stand for? Mm -hmm. I believe anything a believer wants to know about prayer today in this dispensation, it is in Matthew chapter 6. When Jesus is talking, he finishes talking about uh, praying. I believe in the verse 16 or so, he moves to fasting. Mm -hmm. And he says that when you fast, right, don't be like the hypocrites. Do not go around uh, being loud so that you can be seen praying. Do not do things. And he says that when you fast, you should wash your face, mm -hmm. anoint yourself with oil. What that is saying is that we don't, we don't today in this dispensation, when we are fasting, if I'm fasting, you don't need to know about mm -hmm. it. Um, and he says that when you do that, the reward of being seen or being seen is your reward, right? But when you fast with a heart, Joel chapter 2 talks about no longer do we have to rend our garments, which means we don't have to tear our garments and show physical representations of fasting. But he says rend your heart, right? That which God alone sees, mm -hmm. that's what must be torn. That's what must be broken when you're in that fasting state. Um, so to answer your question, today... Uh, the Bible tells us that it is not necessary, right, to, to do those things. As a matter okay. of fact, God desires that when we fast, we fast on, with, with a rela the relationship knowing that knowing we them. are fasting yes. with him, but outwardly no one has to so know. So it's not important to dress anyhow or it show any not. kind of, you don't have to show it. It's between you and God. And, and that's, that's why it says you. we should wash our face and anoint mm -hmm. ourselves. Look normal. Don't yeah. look different don't be so holy that uh, i'm fasting I'm not this <laughs> everybody is, should see me fasting see there's so saying. many types of prayer mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. and sometimes i ask myself this i'm into ministry mm -hmm. i have a lot of people that are backing me up mm -hmm. and i pray for them because i want them to be happy to mm -hmm. come on mm -hmm. i pray for them mm -hmm. i pray for my mother mm -hmm. i pray for myself i pray for people i need so many things mm -hmm. i pray to thank God. it's a lot of things mm -hmm. there is prayer of supplication prayer of intercession prayer of worship sure. thanksgiving prayer sure. praying in the spirit Sure. Is there a prayer, a way of praying, mm. that when I go on my knees for an hour, mm. I could get all this in one mm. and know that, oh, yes, I have really done something. Mm. Is there something like that? <laughs> um, I would say that if you want to always be in tune for prayer, praying in the spirit mm. is the answer, right? Um, Bible talks about how in Romans 8, 20, 26, that that it is the spirit that that helps us in our weakness mm -hmm. the bible says we don't even know what we ought to pray about a lot of the times and so for me when i get into prayer or when i want to spend time away to get into prayer a, for a, a good amount of time i'll solely pray in the spirit and as god tugs certain things on my heart that is when i begin to pray with understanding right paul says we should pray both with the spirit and with understanding and so there is no, at least for me, someone else might say something different, but there is no model that 10 minutes of Thanksgiving, five mm -hmm, minutes of this, mm -hmm. five minutes of that. I don't necessarily uh, agree with that. But what I will say is that when you follow the leading of the spirit, the in, spirit prayer, in prayer, then you are always in tune. There are people who don't know how to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. What would they do? Uh, I actually have a personal story. So for a while I didn't speak in tongues. And I think my church around me and everyone was speaking in tongues and it gets to the point where unless you have understanding of what it is right you may not desire it mm -hmm. the i used to believe that tongues was a gift to some people if god wants to give it to me as a gift fine i'll take it right but as you study the word of god the bible said when peter rose up on the day of pentecost he said that this that you see the men praying in it is a it is uh it is for you for your children and for your children's children. In other words, it is part of the inheritance of the believer, right? The Bible says that when you, uh, when you believe, these signs shall follow them that believe. One of the signs is that they shall speak in new tongues, the Bible says. So that means that so long as you're a believer, one of the inheritances God has for you is that you should pray in tongues. How did, when did you know that your tongues that you're speaking was really powerful? Because mm. I mean, in the beginning, mm. for me in the beginning, I had a faith and I started speaking it. Mm. I was just speaking it. Mm. I didn't know that, oh, is God hearing it? Is it really the right thing? Mm. And I believe every believer experienced this. But when did you know that, oh, this is powerful? I, I don't know if I can pinpoint a day and a time. Actually, when I received 
the gift of tongues, it was very different because I I speak the tongues now that I do on the day I received. Mm -hmm. It's not like I, I I don't know if you have that experience where at first is that mumbling. I like, did the same thing. My Abba, mom used to Abba laugh at me. It's very small yeah. or something, but I actually didn't have that state. Mm. I don't know for some reason I it hit me so strong and I was praying full because tongues is just like any language mm -hmm. English tree ga whatever you learn and you develop the language mm -hmm. but for some reason it seemed I skipped a stage or two and I was able to just pray in the spirit and the more I prayed in the spirit the more the Bible talks about when you pray in the spirit, you are edifying, edifying yourself. yourself. Yeah. The more I knew that I was being edified, the more like spiritual things were beginning to make sense. And so I, un I was able to connect the fact that before receiving the, the gift of tongues, my, my ability to pray for long hours was in there, mm -hmm. right? I'm so limited I mean, in English I get bored. and all those things. If you're yeah. speaking in English, you get yeah. bored. You don't even know what to say for an hour but or this two is and how, all those things. So. This is how I was able to understand the importance of tongues. Mm. And to be honest with you, I, I, speak, I speak in tongues. It's not because it's uh, something that um, a gift I had to go to a pastor to pour mm. it on me. Mm -hmm. I just believe that I have to speak it. Mm -hmm. And when... Um, the good thing was my pastor touched me mm -hmm. and prayed for me mm -hmm. and I just started and mm -hmm. I just started going with it mm -hmm. but I knew that it was really from God because anytime I, 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 I switch I, I want something and so in my mind I'm thinking about it and I'm praying in tongues mm -hmm. towards it and I get a vision mm -hmm. and I realize that okay this is good this is it mm -hmm. but I see tongues this way as an African, I have a local language that sure, I speak, sure. and you're Ghanaian too, sure. and you understand the tree language. We, so, maybe, I mean, you get it. Sure, yeah. When I'm standing next to somebody who don't understand mm -hmm. it, and I want to tell you something very important, yeah. I'm going to switch speak, the language yeah, absolutely. into tree absolutely. and speak it, yeah. and we will get, you. Will, we, I can communicate better, Absolutely. because I don't want that person to absolutely. hear. That's how I see tongues. Yeah. I see that it's a way that we believers can really talk to God. Oh, yeah and connect yeah. and tell him everything yeah. and the spirit is the one that pulls it Absolutely. from our heart to yeah. god so it's yeah. very important uh, you're right on point mm -hmm. because the bible says when we speak in tongues we speak direct mysteries yeah. mysteries directly to god so. directly to god and then sometimes too you know it's so hard to pray i mean mm. there are a lot of things <laughs> social media mm. your work and all that and mm. when i start speaking in tongues maybe for five minutes i'll struggle mm. but in the 10 yeah. 20 30 yeah. I, i'm in mm. And I just speak it and speak it and speak it. And all of a sudden, my friends are coming into mind. Mm. My family is coming into mind. I'm praying. I'm just picturing them and speaking it. I think the, thing, think the key about tongues is whatever you want to pray about, mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit will bring it to mind. Mm -hmm. Just stay in that mm -hmm. and keep on speaking. Because mm -hmm. that thing you're saying is changing lives somewhere. Mm -hmm. it's, that's edifying yourself. It's moving people. Mm -hmm. Things are happening in the Spirit. And... Before you realize it, people will call you and testify and say, hey, God did this, God did that. And mm. it's because of that prayer. Mm. It's very important that we believers take good use of everything God has given us. Oh, yeah. It is not a joke. Mm. He knows what we would need to survive. He knows that this life is not going to be easy. And so make good use of all of it, mm. all the spirit. If you have the gift of the spirit, please use it. Use it. Don't play with it. And encourage other believers. Mm. If somebody is speaking in tongues and you don't understand it, it's okay. They're not speaking to fight you. They, that's how comfortable they are in praying. But whatever you speak to God, it's okay. I know God will guide you to that level. I have to still go on a break. <laughs> Please, don't move. I will be back. At the Nana Morrison Foundation, we support children and widows providing long-term solutions to help lift them out of poverty. We believe the Word of God cannot be shared on an empty stomach. So please, donate to support, and let's end starvation and hunger. We accept and encourage donations from anyone, but our best partners are you, the local churches and faith-based communities. Your support, big or small, can make a huge impact on other people's lives. Please, donate.
Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is still Cheers to God, and we're talking about prayer with Josh Lamte. Listen, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about prayer, and it's very important to know why you should pray. You haven't missed a lot. So please sit down. Mm -hmm. Take a book and a pen. There's enough information that will take you to your next level. Please join me. Josh, prayer. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ led a life on earth that the Bible tells us that if we do, sorry, if we do the same thing, mm -hmm. we would do exactly what Jesus did. Absolutely. He came as a man, he ate as a man, he mm. had feelings and everything, he depended on the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's exactly what God is asking us to do. Mm. But why was Jesus able to heal the sick, mm. raise the dead, mm. but the disciples that were walking with him were not able to do it? Mm. Why? Uh, the Bible gives us two clues, uh, at least two clues, I would say, as to why um, that happened. And even in the story you're, you're referencing, um, I believe Jesus said that this kind goes out by fasting and prayer. Um, I personally believe that the, this kind he's talking about is not a kind of demon. He's talking about unbelief because when they came to him, saying that, oh, the man brought us his son and we could not heal him. Jesus' response was that uh, faithless generation. Mm. How long do I have to be with you? So he was talking about, he was attacking an idea about the fact that they lacked faith for that miracle, okay? I, I believe, and, and I'm, I know that a lot of other people will say otherwise, so I'm open to, to hearing different things. In... In my understanding of Jesus, when he was talking about something, he didn't often just switch to talk about something else. So the preamble was about faith, and he said that this kind goes out by prayer and fasting. I believe you're still talking about faith, that a believer, when there are things that you cannot do, or you think you cannot do, or you don't have the faith for, prayer and fasting can help you build faith mm. for it. This is powerful. Right? Prayer and fasting allows that unbelief to go because the Bible said that he gave everyone a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. If you have a seed of a mustard seed of faith, then you can move mountains. Mm -hmm. However, uh, that seed is meant to grow, right? And if it's not growing, then you cannot do the, the deeper things, if you will, in mm. God, right? And so it is one of the things that we can do uh, to build our faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So read the word, all that stuff. I believe one of the things as well is pray and fast, mm -hmm. right? That is one of the things I believe, that, that they didn't have faith. So faith is very important in doing miracles. So, but then why were they able to do it after yeah. Jesus left? Perfect. Uh, I think um, the second portion of that is the Holy Spirit. Mm. You said that he came as a man, he ate as a man, he had feelings as a man, but in Acts 10, 38, we're told that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Mm -hmm. And he went about doing good, healing the sick, preaching the word. So it was the anointing that allowed him to do those things. And remember when the disciples were working with Jesus, the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen upon them. It wasn't until after, because he said, go and wait. Mm -hmm. After, and then when he left on the day of Pentecost, we know what happened. The Spirit of God fell on all of them. And it was that very moment that Peter, who was a coward and denied Jesus before mm -hmm. a little girl, who now having been filled with the mm -hmm. Spirit, was able to rise up and preach. Mm. So with faith, number one, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that's where this, what the Bible says, that greater work shall we do. You're talking a, a about... God anointed Jesus, mm -hmm. poured on him the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If somebody's watching us, they would think that, oh, they made him special. That's why he could do that. Mm. But <laughs> God has given us the Holy Spirit mm. now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means accepting Christ as mm -hmm. your Lord and personal Savior, mm -hmm. you can, absolutely, you can, with absolutely. faith, heal the sick. Mm -hmm. You it, can. It actually says it's one of the signs that should follow the believers. Mm -hmm. And so if you are a believer, this might sound controversial, but if you're a believer and you haven't laid hands on a person before when they were sick and they've been, uh, they've been made well, then you must have a desire for it. Because if we believe that God cannot lie to us in his word, and this is what he says should follow uh, believers, then I must get to that place where mm. I desire that the next time my mom says she has mm. a cold or she's sick, just lay hands Cancel. and tell them that God, according to your word. Before I go, mm. Josh, mm. Just, just being that prayerful person mm. you are, 
give me a few lines. <laughs> a prayer that you think, if I pray this prayer, yeah. I mean, if you pray that prayer, I always get answered. <laughs> Teach us a few lines. Uh, I can't give anything <laughs> other than other than what Jesus did. He said that, like I said, if you want anything about prayer, it will always be what Jesus has already taught mm -hmm. us. And he said that, thy will be done. Thy will be done. If there's any prayer that, that we really want, that hinges on our destiny, what God has for us, everything, because... That's another topic, but man, we can choose our own will when God has <laughs> a topic. wonderful will for us. And mm -hmm. so anytime we can surrender our will and say that I will be done, we are guaranteed that that prayer is answered because God wants to do his will. Please, thank you so lives. much for coming. I have to go. Mm -hmm. How can we find you? Um, if you want to find me personally, um, the only social media I have is our Instagram. It is GQ underscore George with two E's at the end. Um, but if you want to find Blaze, mm -hmm. um, which is the ministry that I'm a part of, um, it is at the Blaze ATL on Instagram. Um, it is. We also have a YouTube. It is Blaze ATL on YouTube as okay. well. Um, and th any w one of those, um, I'm, I'm able to. Be I'm found. excited. I thank you so much. I really love this and. This is one thing that I've learned. I really don't pray about anything but let your will be done. Mm -hmm. And it's a different topic. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding that I am here because God is, is the will of God. Mm -hmm. It's he who has made me who I am today. And I sometimes I think I want this, I want that. But then God gives me something way bigger than mm -hmm. that. So my prayer changed to Lord God, let your will be done. Mm -hmm. And I pray more for people. I pray more for the sick. And I think if you're a believer, it's, it's the, some, that's, this is one of the best way to grow your faith. I really want you to connect with me. Yes, reach me at Nana Morrison underscore on Instagram. My Facebook is Nana Morrison. Connect with me. Tell me your problem. Let's, let's know God together. Let's mm. grow together. It's the best way to know God. You can also watch this show on our YouTube at Cheers to God. On Instagram as Cheers to underscore God. On Facebook as Cheers to God. On TikTok, Cheers to God. And our website is www.cheerstogod.com. Listen, God loves you, mm. but I need you to support the show so that we can reach out to many people. The proceeds of your support go to Nana Morrison Foundation, where we feed the hungry. We need to feed people mm. and, and put them in, uh, in a better shelter and clothing before we can even tell them about God. Help us do that. Mm -hmm. The little, you think is little, but to us is enough. And our paper is info at cheers to God .com. My Zell and Cash App is 470-331-6326. Again, 470-331-6326. God loves you. Mm. I love you dearly. Mm. God wants to transform your life. Make us a date and watch us all the time because he has amazing guests for you. I want to leave you with this. Pray. Pray. Even if it's five minutes a day, it's okay. Mm. If it's five minutes every hour, it's okay. Connect with God. Connect with him. It's very important. Don't leave a life don't live an empty life please live a fulfilled life i would see you again i love you all have a blessed day thank you so much for coming thank you god for bless you me. god bless bye bye you.